Uh, hello friends and welcome to Adventist Angels watching on radio. Uh, so much uh, uh, glad that this moment we are going to share just a few words with you uh, for encouragement uh, for the current time. Okay, we today we are going to cover about the climate, uh, Paul climate action, what uh, it all entails. You know. The time which we are living is like the time of a job. Uh, one thing which I wish to remind you is that the book of Job is the first ever written book in the Bible. So it has a lot of uh, truths which we need uh, to use, the truths which we need to live with. And these are the kind of messages which we need in a time like this to understand the character of the devil from the beginning, how he has been working to bring fire from heaven that is what we expect in these last days that he will be like an angel of light and they will like bring fire from heaven so we need to be careful concerning this let's pray as we start father in heaven the king of the universe thank you for this hour we are prefected be given glory and guide me to the end and give us thy spirit prepare us lord for thy second coming O oh Lord, we pray that you give us thy spirit and you be our guide. O oh Father, help your people, draw us, Father, save us and hide us in your pavilion and the entire rock, O oh King of glory. With us the end in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. So friends, today we are going to cover about the Paul climate action. Where did these words come from? Uh, if you look on this uh, news article here, it is from the Euronews Green. Dot Green says, A heritage uh, planet of tomorrow requires, we set poor goals today. A heritage planet of tomorrow requires, we set poor goals today. But where did these words come from? Who is the source of this? That for tomorrow? How do we know that tomorrow is coming? What does the scripture speak concerning this? Does not the word of God say, Worry not of tomorrow, for you don't know what it brings forth? Pope Francis and other Christian leaders are calling for Paul climate action. This is September 10th, 2021. So who is behind? Who is driving the world? Is it, that it, is it not that the prophecy is very clear concerning this? Yes, we have covered this that... Uh, all events which are going to happen in these last days, they are going to revolve around Christianity. Not even in Islam, not nowhere like that. It is going to revolve about Christianity. Pope Francis and other Christian leaders are calling for Paul climate action. So all these and uh, those who are behind it, this we know that uh, who are spearheading this. Also, Pope Francis and Christian leaders, Paul climate strategy. This is from... Uh, Embauer News from Embauer Missions News, uh, climate, uh, Paul climate strategy, and this is actually a unity which is being formed in like to save the earth. Kind of unity, what kind of unity is it? We are going to see our prophet speaks of uh, the same. On another news article, it was saying Paul Francis and other Christian leaders are calling for Paul climate action from OPP in the news as it covers. You can see. It's 10th September 2021 on the same PPC, P PPC people fixing the world. I is it true that we can fix the world? Did we create it? How is it that we can fix it? My Bible tells me that they have not asked, the one who created, they have not asked that this mouth. Pope Francis encourages young climate activists to build dialogue, to build dialogue. Do you know? Building dialogue is coming, you sit with the table and reason together. How does the Bible say in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18? Come now and let us reason together. That is that we sit in the table, we sit together and reason. Who again speaks in the table? Do you know that Jezebel also has his own table? You know the climate we are having issues here. It also represents the times of, uh, uh, the, times of uh, the Jews when it was at Mount Carmel. There was a climate with Elijah. 
so he was so told like he was a trapper of the people but in a real sense it was not the problem the problem was sin they had broken the commandments of god because first john chapter 3 verse 4 says that sin is the transgression of the law of god they had broken the laws of god even with us today the bible is very clear in the book of uh, the bible is very evident and very clear in the book of uh, if you can look carefully in the book of uh, Ma Isaiah, sorry, the book of Isaiah chapter 4 verse 5, it also speaks the message that the earth, the earth is languishing and withering because they have broken the everlasting covenant, they have transgressed the laws, they have changed the ordinance, they have changed the laws, friends, of, of God, the Ten Commandments. So Elijah is needed in a time like this to direct the people to the true worship, not to nature worship, which people are worshiping nature in this time. They are weeping for Tammuz, as the book of Ezekiel says that they are weeping for Tammuz. So people need to be directed to be told, no, the problem is not Elijah. The problem is not the remnant who are among them. No, the problem is that people have uh, taken men to be their shield. They are trusting men. Policymakers in Europe and around the world can help accelerate the shift to a more sustainable world insensitive okay and all such, such like uh, messages so these policy makers literal today uh, do they understand that who really has brought these policies who is directing them if we read from the scriptures in the book of uh, the book of daniel my bible tells me who is behind these policies is the pope of rome daniel chapter 8 verse 25 he says that through his policy so these policymakers are relying on the policies of Rome because it's Rome who started all this. So through his policy also, he shall cause crafty to prosper in his hand and he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. So this man is magnifying himself like God, sitting in the temple of God and also is bringing, is coming in the name of peace. But the, my Bible also tells me that when they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction shall come. So they are there is a war here warring against extremists those who don't want to bend their truth and those whom they seem like they are differing from them like elijah was differing from them so through his policy also he shall cause crafty to prosper in his hand what is crafty my bible tells me in the book of mark that crafty is going for them the jews wanted to take jesus christ by crafty by deception so by peace he shall destroy men he shall also stand up against the prince of princes he shall stand up against who jesus christ the angel of light the prince of peace but he shall be broken without end, meaning he shall be consumed without end. my bible tells me second thessalonians chapter 2 verses 8 that even even and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and will destroy with the brightness of his coming so these things are happening that we may know that it is the time of the end. So it continues saying we cannot afford to wait. So they cannot wait. This moment calls for bold thinking and transformative ideas. Bold thinking. What about listening to the voice of God, what he says in the scriptures? They say do away with that one. We need to use the scriptures of uh, the Pope where I said I shared with you the last time they are using the principle of the fraternity duty and uh, the laudato si those two doctrines and policies is the same they are using but listening or using the bible they don't want they are thinking logics and philosophies and transformative ideas it demands we reward those who lead and encourage others to catch up so working together across our economies we must take every opportunity to bring together stakeholders elevate big ideas and facilitate product productive dialogues but not to listen to the voice of god are they ready to reason with god and hear what he speaks to us in these days or in these times they are not really ready about it let's read a, a, a small story here okay john chapter 7 verse 25 says judge not according to the appearance or nations but judge righteous judgment do not use your own wisdom, which is the voice God is speaking to us in these last days. Do not use your own wisdom. Do not use your own understanding. God is calling us that we may depend on him. He says, then say, said some of uh, them of, the Je of Jerusalem, Is not this he whom they seek to kill? What were the Pharisees doing? Are not uh, Christians uniting together in this time? What were they doing to Jesus Christ? Did they not seek to kill him? 
what were they calling Jesus Christ an extremist, a fundamentalist who was casting devils by who? By Perry the Pope, as they so said, even as they did to Elijah. What could they do to God's people in these last days? But lo, he speaketh boldly, and they said nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? Did they know that who was Jesus Christ? But in this time also, you can also ask in another way around. Do these rulers really know who is the Antichrist in these last days? Do they really know who is the Antichrist they are uniting with? And who are they coming against? The people of God, because they will deem like they are the trapper of the people. As it happened to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ tells us, the master, the master, uh, the servant is not a power, but the master. So, so expect what is to come. It continues to say in verse 27, that how pay we know this man whence he is? But when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. Uh, they never, they are waiting for s some other different things rather than uh, focusing in the word of God in these last days. Let's continue, it says here. Uh, then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, You both know me, and you know whence I am, and I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom you know not. So these Pharisees, these teachers of the law, these teachers, they never knew who really Jesus Christ was. They never understood him. Even in this time, do they, do they really know the Antichrist who they are uniting with? But what does my Bible tell me? Let's continue. You will get a, a message here which will encourage you as they are uniting. But I know him, for I am from him, and he has sent me. But who has sent the Pope in this time? My Bible tells me in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses... Uh, uh, in verses uh, 9, he says, Who has sent the Pope? says, Even him who is coming is after the working of uh, Satan with all power and the signs and lie wonders. So, what do we expect to be done these last days? Fire to be brought from heaven. Is it like the time of Elijah that he brings fire from heaven? No, he will bring fire like in the time of, uh, of uh, in the time of uh, Job. And he would accuse God that the fire of God has come down from heaven. So he would accuse God that God is behind it. You remember when this crisis started? How he was saying, let this unity continue and you will see what will come. What happened to Jesus Christ is going to befall his own people in this latter time which we live. So let's be ready. Let's be ready to approve our maker in this time which we live. Terrible times, apostasy in our ranks or our ways around. People who are on the wrong side are the most kind of people who will say that no, these people have erred, but they are the one who have erred and gone out of the foundation of their forefathers, even as children are reading out in this. Did you know that in the time of uh, the time of Jesus Christ, the children were leading out in the proclamation of the message. So who is leading out in this time? You check on your news article, is saying that uh, Pope Francis encourages young climate activist to pure dialogue who was used in the time of jesus christ to call osana to the son of death they were little children so who is the pope using this last last days children friends the book of john chapter 7 verse 30 my bible tells me it says um then they sought to take him but no man laid hands on him because his hour was not yet come so what they were doing is they were seeking him like they saw like he was a threat to them they were seeking him in all ways, all way around, so that they can uh, take him uh, by force. Not to greet him, to kill him, to destroy him. And the men of the people believed on him. And they said, when Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than this which this man has done? But we also anticipate in these last days that the, the Antichrist is also going to do marvelous miracles. But he shall bring fire from heaven, and they will come like an angel of light, as the Bible tells us in First Corinthians. I uh, speak so. So the Pharisees add that the people murmured such things concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. So what the people in these last days are going to do, even the churches, they are going to be in envy that how come there is a small group of people who are not uniting us, who they are calling us what? Extremists in these last days. That these are the trappers of the people for their agenda to flourish. 
so they will be against God's people. So year after, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and has nothing in me. So who is the prince of this world? So who is the prince of heaven? Jesus Christ is the prince of uh, of uh, of heaven. But another one, another prince, that is the devil's come in these last days. But he's using man. He's using somebody. And uh, you can see his movements. Like he wants to save the world. He wants to save the people. Look like he's, he wants to save the people. Do you remember uh, uh, Pharaoh? Pharaoh was very careful that he was saying, you know, Moses, you cannot take the women and the children to the desert. They're going to die. I want to save them. But really, in the, was he caring for them? No. He was just using uh, his tongue uh, in a wrong way. John 16:2. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yeah, the time cometh that whosoever kills you will think that he does God's service. What did they do to Jesus Christ at Nazareth? They threw him out. They wanted to throw him uh, from the grave. What did they do to John the, uh, the Baptist? They united in that time. Let's see, in the book of uh, John 16, 3, this pipe, the Bible says, And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father. Though me, they have not known the Father. They are, they are establishing an earthly kingdom rather than an heavenly kingdom. They never depend upon the coming of Lord Jesus Christ. So, should, so this message should apply now to the Pope of Rome. It says, should a wise man at a vain knowledge and fear is paired with the east wind? Last time we covered in the book of Hosea chapter 12 verses 1, I believe it is not chapter 10 verse 1, he said that east wind is falsehood and the lie. And the lie. This is the same lie which they are going to use in these last days. Remember, people are looking for crowns in this time. And this is a very great deception in this time. This lie, let's see from the spirit of a prophecy, from the spirit of prophecy, there are two crowns here. Let's determine. It says chapter 6, 7 of uh, Testimony to the Church, volume 1, page 348 says that uh, in the vision given me at the part of Greek, Michigan, October 25, 1861, I was shown this art, dark and gloomy. Do you know why it was dark? The noon of the purpose was the darkness of the world. It was when the Pope was back. It's when the scripture was suppressed. It's not the scripture suppressed in this time that those who speak truth and they could not pen are called extremist, fundamentalist, occult, Nazarites like that. I was shown this art. Uh, I was shown this art, dark and gloomy, said the angel, look carefully. Then I was shown the people whom the art uh, upon the earth. Some were surrounded by angels of God, others were in total darkness, surrounded by evil angels. I saw an arm reach down from heaven holding a golden scepter. On the top of the scepter was a crown studded with diamonds. Every diamond emitted light, bright, clear, and beautiful. Are you a diamond in this last time, last time shedding out light and brightness, clear, and beautiful? Are you a diamond? Or a you chaff. Inscribed upon the crown were these words, All who win me are happy and shall have a lasting life. But others, what are they winning? They are winning the world. So below this crown was another scepter, and upon this also was placed a crown. That's the prince of the world now giving also his crown. In the center of which were jewels, gold, and silver, reflecting some light. Some light. You know, the devil mixes truth and error. So the inscription upon the crown was a three treasure. Riches is power. All who win me have honor and fame. Are not people winning honor and fame in these last days, celebrities, for the sake of pleasing men? I saw a vast multitude rushing forward to obtain this crown. A vast multitude rushing to obtain this crown. They were rushing very fast to obtain this crown which the Pope was giving them. You know, people are being rewarded in this time. I saw in the news at cost that those people who are advanced in the agenda of the crime should be rewarded. And this multitude is foretold also in the book of Isaiah. It says, War unto the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas. You know what seas is? It represents many people. And to the rushing of the nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. So like floods, deceptions, 
and uh, when floods come and they fill the land you know it's troublesome you know what happened to the church the book of revelation chapter 12 there was floods which the earth which america assisted the woman from other nations who were seeking the church so i saw 17 13 the nation shall rush like, like the rushing of many waters but god shall rebuke them and they shall flee far off, and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains, before the wind, and like a roaring thing before the wild wind. So as they shall be doing this, the Lord is coming, and they shall chase them. Do you know what this reflects? It's in the book of Daniel, chapter 2. It says that the rock which would come from heaven would crush these kingdoms and establish a kingdom that would never be destroyed. Not an earthly kingdom, for this is how the Lord will come. The Bible says in Isaiah 13, verse 4, The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, at a mouthful noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together the lord of hosts must master at the host of the battle the lord also is gathering his army his army is also being gathered here as others are gathering for the battle of Armageddon, god is also gathering his army in this time are you among god's army they come from a far country from the end of heaven even the lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land why because they have trusted in men they have discarded god out of the bracket they have not asked him about the earth they now depend on men and many's wisdom this they have done the Bible continues to say, Hold ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. So it shall come as, as a destruction from the Almighty. So what should we do? We should be ready, ready, and ready, and reflecting the glory of Jesus Christ. So who is leading the, also the other way around? The Pope is leading and directing uh, the people of the world. That Pope Francis urges leaders to take radical climate action at COP26. So the Pope is also in the other way around, urging, commanding people, radical climate action against COP26. Uh, COP Pope, Pope, uh, Pontiff calls for rethink on the future of our world. They are thinking of the future, but not thinking of directing people to the kingdom of heaven, which is about to be established in this time. In a special message recorded on eve of Gropo summit. So they are directing the people to the agenda of the world. But have they directed the people that this is a sin problem? What was the problem at the time of Elijah? It was over breaking the commandments of God or discarding the voice of the Most High God. The Bible continues to say, okay, another news article was saying in COP26 message, Pop equates climate change with the global war. So it is a war. Today, as in the aftermath of the Second World War, the international community needs to set as a priority the implementation of collegial for cited actions. So it's a group of war, the climate agenda. But whose war is it against? Whose war was it with in the time of Elijah? It was against Elijah. They were looking for him everywhere. So what did you expect in a time like this? So generally, let's see in the book of uh, Job, Job chapter 15 verse 7, the Bible speaks to the Pope in this time. Art thou the first man that was born, or was thou made before the hills? How do you know the solutions you are giving to the people? The Lord God of heaven is asking, you are feeding on east wind, that is falsehood and lies, and you are feeding the people the east wind. These are the winds which have moved the houses of God. Those people have built upon sand, but not upon the rock Jesus Christ, the heavenly kingdom. But you are feeding them with the east wind. You are speaking with the very knowledge. You have even uh, led them to follow this path. The uh, Bible continues to say in verses 7, verses 7, uh, verses 7 of Job, chapter 15, verse 7, Are thou the first man that was born, or was thou made before the hills? A question is asked. And also, God goes on to question uh, the man of sin in these last days. The question which goes before us is Job 25, uh, okay, Job, Job 15 verse 8. As thou, as thou art the secret of God, and as thou restrain wisdom to thyself, who is this that knows the secrets of God? It's Jesus Christ who created, who the Lord was using to create the world. But who are they asking the one who created? Who are they asking? They are asking man. Uh, and does thou restrain wisdom to thyself? Who is also known as wisdom? His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, His Wisdom, Counselor. 
but who are they asking wisdom from? From man? Did he create? No. The book of Job 20 verse 19, because he had oppressed and has forsaken the poor, because he has violently taken away an house which he builded not. Which house is this? He's fighting the house of the church of God. But the house which shall be pulled upon the rock shall stand. Even if this east wind floods come, it shall just remain. The book of Job chapter 24 verses 2, the Bible says these words. Some remove the landmarks, they violently take away the frogs and feed thereof. So what is happening here is that uh, there is a war. And this war is to fight the people to remove them from the landmarks. Those who will not depend, there is a war which is waged here, at, but remain faithful friends. And they said unto them, Go! And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine, and behold, the whole herd of swine, uh, swine rain violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. You see the character of the devil people in this time are beyond reason. They can even not reason how events are happening. Why? Because when the spirits which are going to the world to prepare for this war, they when they enter us, we became very mad. We cannot reason. We are beyond reason. We be like those swine, sort of pigs which were uh, cast to the, to the sea. People are perishing, many people, you know, sea represents multitudes. They perished, they went to the nations, they pulled upon the sand, sand represents people. The Bible tells me that the children of Israel be like the sand of the sea. So sea represents a people, many people, so uh, the sand of the sea, it represents uh, many people who they have pulled upon the sand, not upon the rock. They are perishing now the east wind of the pope when it comes here and this is delusions and deceptions it sweeps them away the book of Luke chapter chapter 8 verse 33 the bible continues also quotes the same then it went the devils out of the man so what came out of those spirits those who are devils then it went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine and the had rain violently down a steep place into the lake and they were choked and they were choked. Are not people of God choked in this time? What kind of other things which were being choked in which Jesus Christ described? He said there is some kind of grains which were planted. Some were planted inside the what? The thorns. Inside the thorns. And they were choked. It presents the pressures of the world. They love the world more than God. And they were choked. They were choked, friends. That also gives this same message here. Uh, this uh, message here, the vision uh, which was given to Sister White says, A large company of evil angels were very busy. Satan was in the midst of them, and all looked with the most exacting satisfaction, satisfaction upon the company struggling for the crown. It seemed to throw a peculiar charm upon those who eagerly sought it. Men who sought this earthly crown were professed Christians. Some of them seemed to have a little light. A little right means this they had a little right there, but they were choked. They could look wish free upon the heavenly crown and they could often seem charmed with this beauty, yet they had no true sense of this value and glory. While with one hand they were reaching forth languidly for the heavenly, with the other they reached eagerly for the artery, determined to possess that and in their honest pursuit for the artery, they lost sight of the heavenly. They were left in darkness. You know, darkness here represents when the papacy has arisen again. Yet they were anxious, groping about to secure the artery crown to save the earth. Some became disgusted with the company who sought it so eagerly. They seemed to have a sense of uh, their danger and turned from it and honestly sought for the heavenly crown. These people, after the crisis is increasing, others are joining the world and others are running from this snare. We call it the noisome pestilence snare of this last day, the noisome pestilence. As a snare shall it come to the end, the end of the world. So the countenances of such soon change from dark to light, from gloom to cheerfulness and holy joy, because they realized the truth. They knew the truth and they returned from this snare of uh, the papacy. Also, you know these are spirits of devils which are going to the world to prepare people for war. And I saw three and green spirits like frogs. These are devils. Like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. 
do you know these unclean spirits how they were also called in the book of Luke? They were being called as unclean spirits. They were also called as devils. These were devils, friends. The book of uh, Matthew has said it was uh, it was uh, unclean spirits. Uh, when they were come out out into the herd of swine, this was unclean spirits which came out and went into the swine. But also in Luke it says they were what? They were devils which came out. So that one we have covered so so that we can understand who are, who are these devils. These are going to prepare people. They entered into the swine. What kind of things people are using these last days which the devil is using so much and people are becoming mad. They are becoming like animals, friends. Can they understand these things? God of mercy. Let's see. In the, in the inspiration it continues to say it was a pain it was painful to see this for Christians. It was painful, friends. It is ever painful that those people who God expects to know these things are also taking part in it without understanding what really is transpiring. So they need to be awakened and to understand the issue uh, which is happening here. They need to understand and run from this near. Let's see. Inspiration, it says that it's very painful for those who know the truth to join this group. It was painful to see those who should have been ripening for glory and they refitting for immortality, exerting all their strength to keep their earthly treasures. Such I saw could not evaluate the heavenly treasure. Their strong affections for the earthly cause them cause them to show by their works that they do not esteem the heavenly inheritance enough to make any sacrifice for it. The young man manifested a willingness to keep the commandments, yet our Lord told him that he lacked one thing. He desired eternal life, but loved his possession more. Many are self-deceived. They have not sought for truth as for it treasure. Their powers are not put to the best account. Their minds, which might be illuminated with heaven's light, are perfected and troubled. Their cares of this world, these snares of this world, as a snare shall it come, and their deceitful, deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of uh, other things entering in choke the world and it becomes unfruitful. Such, said the angel, are without excuse. I saw the light waning away from them. They did not desire to understand the solemn, important truths for this time, and thought they were well off without understanding them. Their light went out and they were groping in darkness. These are the foolish virgins in these last days. So they are the uh, foolish uh, virgins in these last days. Let's continue. Uh, Revelation chapter 18 verses 2. What are these unclean spirits coming, uh, going to do? And they cried mighty with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and it's become the habitation of devils, and the horror of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful part. So these kind of spirits, we have said they are demons. When they entered the swain, you know how people were. They were beyond reason. They, were, they would never even trust. They can never trust even the word of God. Or we like sheep have gone astray. But what can we say in these last days? Narrow is the way. They are following what? The broad path. Papron the great. But what is Papron city? What is a city? A city is a church. I've defined it before. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. So Papron is a symbol of a church. So in these last days we have also daughters as Revelation 17 verse 5 says that this woman has her daughters as well. But what will come next is that you know what happened in the time of uh, Luke. The book of Luke chapter 9 speaks of events as they are chronologically to happen. You know Luke was uh, giving an order of events in a very good way. So these four spirits are uh, unclean uh, and eight for bad spirits are demons who are entering people and the people are beyond what? They are beyond reason. Finally, uh, in Revelation chapter 18 verses 3, believe I'm almost to finish here, it says that for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of our fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of our delicacies are not the people or universe who are they following? They are following the Pope with word, a man of his own word as he calls himself now. But who is the word? It is Jesus Christ. Revelation 8, uh, okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 21, 
they are sitting at Jezebel's table. Who, who is Jezebel? It was a church, a false church versus the church of God, a remnant church in that time. Who was the remnant? Elijah and the 7,000 uh, prophets who never fall, fell down to worship Baal. So 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 21, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. This is what the vision was saying. You cannot hold both sides, one hand holding heaven and the other one holding the treasures of the earth. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. Who, what kind of table uh, is this? The last time we covered about Jezebel's table, you go and check our clips online, you can understand this message. Jezebel's table. Who is seducing my servants to commit hoedom and fornication, as this is describing here. Finally, it concludes and it says, uh, Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? So another question I can leave to you. As God sees to be jealousy, because he says my, my name can and glory can I not give to another. Are we stronger than he? Do we provoke the Lord God to jealousy? Who are they following? They are following every word which comes out of the mouth of the papacy. Pope Francis encourages young climate activists to build dialogue and all religious leaders. What are they uh, aiming at? That what we have covered. May God bless you and thank you for your time. Thank you so much because you have gone together with us to this end as we take the step to pray. Our earlier planet of tomorrow requires we set poor goals today. Tomorrow? Who knows about tomorrow? What is does Nowadays Christians are taking the word of God like a what? Uh, just a story. Just like a story. May we humble ourselves as we pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this hour. Be praised and be uplifted. And bless us, Lord, and prepare us for thy second coming. Give us thy spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray that we believe. Amen. Goodbye, and peace be with you. Thank you so much for joining Adventist Angels Watchman Radio. You can reach us through our email, that is Adventist Angels Watchman Radio at Outlook.com. And our number is plus 254-734-228119. And also you can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, Adventist Angels Watchman Radio. Goodbye.